Hi and welcome back to another session of Sick Games Entertainment. Finally an episode uh, that I do by day. I know you can't tell the difference since I'm inside the studio, but usually all my recordings are at night and I almost fall asleep. So today I got a little bit more energy for you. And by the looks of it, I will have more time after all um, Austria is on lockdown and I have officially some time off. So today we're going to take a look at the 3090 and what it can bring to the table using mainly a set of Corsa Competizione and a Pimax 5K Plus headset. Most of you have seen me try out ACC on the 3080 and for the most part it worked out great on high VR settings with the HTC Vive Pro. Pimax however performed fairly bad if you had it on high VR. Uh, mainly due to the big resolution difference. In general, I have found that tweaking the settings a little bit will give you overall a much better performance in ACC and I will of course show you those custom settings in game. The 3090 overall performs pretty much the same as the 3080, but it allows you to set a much higher resolution, in my case a whopping 4180 by 2576. And there is no surprise here, given what we all have seen in other benchmarks on regular monitors. The higher the resolution, the greater the performance difference. Same principle applies to VR. It allows you to take pretty much the same in-game VR settings that you would have on a 3080 with a lower resolution headset and apply them to a higher resolution in VR with a 3090. Adding a little bit benefit with uh, a few more eye candies and then mainly adding the big benefit of streaming and recording at the same time without hitting the VRAM limit or causing the page fault meter to spike in eye racing as I have had it previously with the 3080 due to the limitation of 10 GB memory. Up next I will show you a small demonstration using the Pimax set to its largest field of view which according to Steam VR is 4180 by 2576. And I'm trying to phrase this very carefully as SteamVR and Pytel seem to speak the same language but may get lost in translation. While I did triple check all this, I don't want to be held accountable for any third party errors, if any apply. Index and G2 users will find operating on this resolution quite helpful, um, at least for reference but um, I don't have those devices, so I cannot test them. The main reason why I don't want to switch to G2 is because of the inside out tracking. Given that I use the motion simulator, I doubt that it will perform without any issues on tracking, but feel free to convince me otherwise in the comments down below. Speaking of comments down below, I'm really proud of all my subscribers on this channel and the honorable etiquette that you guys hold up I personally read every single comment that you post here and it appears that we have no trolls on this channel whatsoever. All comments are respectful, even when there is disagreement, I enjoy this high standard that you guys set here. I've taken a recent look at the demographics of this channel and it looks like we have 100% male, no surprise here, and mainly 35 to 55 years of age, which I guess is somewhat uh, responsible for their good manners. Anyway, moving on, here is a quick screenshot of the Pimax settings in PyTool with the field of view set to large, fixed foveated rendering set to balance, but in this instance it can be set to close, meaning off, as it apparently does nothing in ACC and most sim titles for that matter. So um, the SPS issue that I addressed on the previous episode may fall in the same category. Uh, and not be as important um, after all. So, uh, but I will conduct my own investigation into this matter and let you know uh, as soon as possible. Um, in Steam VR, all you need to know is that motion smoothing is disabled. There are many VR setting guides uh, on YouTube with ACC, but pretty much all of them use the fake reprojection, which allows them to set higher settings with the drawback of running less frames than a PlayStation 4, well, 45 FPS, um, which to make it, um, makes it for me a bit of a deal breaker. I don't want to run it at 45 FPS. 
So in all of my tests, I really try to fight for native 90 Hertz. Here are some quick shots of the NVIDIA settings and last but not least, the PC specs used on my rig. Up next, I will show you the custom settings that I have set in ACC and I apologize for the poor quality as I had to zoom in quite a lot in order for you to be able to read the text. So those are all the settings. Um, I basically already saved them as a profile. All you need to know is, yeah, right here. Uh, resolution scale 80%. View distance high, shadows high, shadow distance high, anti-aliasing high, anti-aliasing type temporal, effects low, pulse processing high, foliage low, texture high, mirror view distance 50, mirror quality low, mirror resolution low, open on visibility 20, VR pixel density 100, virtual to real scale 100, materials quality high, temporal upsampling enabled, bloom quality off, volumetric fog disabled, Full HLOD quality very low, car LOD quality 65, HLOD enabled, advanced sharpening filter disabled, motion blur disabled, uh, saturation 100, white balance neutral, sharpness 150, and the rest of those four is uh, standard. Here we have Vising disabled, frame, let, uh, frame rate limit off. Yeah, uh, I think that's about it. So. These settings should overall give us about 90 FPS. Um, we're gonna do this as always at the same track as before. Matching car and track data found in Sim Experience database. Profile modified. Okay, yeah, don't worry about that. That's just for some experience owners. Uh, it's basically a cloud profile getting automatically uh, loaded in, so I don't have to fiddle around with all the settings from the motion sim. And yeah, just before we go, uh, obviously the first lap, as always, there's going to be some depths back and forwards, but overall it should stay at about 90 FPS. Um, don't pay too much attention to the average frame meter because this is uh, averaging even during the loading times and all this, so does just pay attention to the regular FPS meter, pay attention to the GPU frame time and the usage. Stay double file.
So yeah, I guess I'd like to point out as well that um, the resolution, well, what you see right now on your monitor or on your cell phone, wherever you're watching, uh, obviously looks a, a lot better than what it looks in the headset. So I, I gotta point this out. Um, why is that? Well, it's because the resolution of 4180 by 2576 is getting downscaled to full HD 1920 by 1080. So obviously you see a much clearer image. Um, and that's not to say that the image isn't good in the headset, but you gotta be fair and say ACC does not look really clear. It, I, and I have the feeling it doesn't matter what you're using. Because uh, compared to eye racing, ACC is still very mushy. Just, just I, I don't know. I hate it. It's, it's uh, the graphics look all great and it's all fine, but it's in terms of clarity, it's just not there. And I, I doubt that you can get there. To be honest, um, the main issue here is the dashboard display. You can't read that at all. Like it's, it's. You know, obviously you can see the gear and you can see like the time and whatnot, but it's the overall clarity is just not uh, comparable with iRacing or Project Cars or, well, titles that just are a lot better optimized for VR. And um, if I run the Pimax at that resolution on iRacing, which I did, and you can turn on anything, anything you like, HDR, and, and uh, all the filters and all the bells and whistles, maximum graphics with eight times anti-aliasing. It just looks fantastic in iRacing. And even though you can't compare really the graphics, it's, it's uh, well, DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, but still, I, I will take the iRacing graphics overall any time of the day. Um, the only thing that uh, graphically is a lot more advanced are the pit stops with the animations and stuff like that. So yeah, for sure, this looks a lot better in ACC. But in overall, I really have to point this out that it's in terms of clarity, it's one of the worst performers. And I hope it's just my settings. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know if you can uh, tweak it more. Um, from from what I giving from what I'm giving you right now are base settings to start uh, from. So I believe that, that with those settings you can perform um, in in any kind of headset, and then from here you just go on and tweak and see what works out for you. Uh, if any one of you finds a clear image where you can actually really detailed see the dashboard, then let me know in the comments below. So this is what I have achieved after a few days of testing. I'm sure it can be tweaked better, but in all honesty, I believe that those settings would rather need to be turned down and not up because of this footage um, not showing any night racing or weather changes. So in general, I'm starting to slowly realize how none of these tests matter at all. Even if I show you all the settings in SteamVR, GeForce settings, in-game settings, Pi tool settings, and even the hardware components used, there are still tracks, opponent count, time, weather variables, and your own ability to detect frame drops without a meter is, for example, I personally don't notice frame drops up to 10%. So anything above 80, I don't even see the change for the second that it appears. Um, on a side note though, I believe there is a difference between frame drops and frame time spikes. As frame time spikes can be very distracting even for just a split second. Depending on how they go, uh, low spikes don't matter that much, but high frame times uh, cause the gameplay to stutter, while frame drops can go unnoticed if not caused by the frame time. Does that make sense? I hope it does. All right, so here's my verdict on the 3090. Should you buy the 3090 or be happy with a 3080 or possibly an AMD variant? The answer is a very definitive no to almost all of you. There are several reasons why I can not recommend buying the 3090. First of all, it's not the advertised $1,500. I can't speak for your country, but in mine, the 3090 Founders Edition was like 1,570 euros. So that's euros, not dollars to begin with. The chance of you getting a Founders Edition at store price is almost zero. 
An AIB card like the Ventus runs at 1800 euros and that's from an authorized dealer. So it's an insane amount of premium to pay over the 3080, which also is not the advertised 700 bucks, but likely to be around like 900 euros if you're lucky enough to buy one at MSRP. So if you are that set on the 3090, then at least have the patience to get your hands on a founder's edition at MSRP cost. It looks better, it's cheaper, and it's the only version that I could possibly recommend. The only justification to run this card is if you need to record or stream at the same time as you race, because it will otherwise rape your page fault meter and you will run out of memory if you care to record in good quality. Other than that, the only headset that would require this card uh, is probably an upcoming G2 uh, or most definitely the 8K Pimax version. For the rest of you, just get the 3080 or AMD variant and, and spend the difference on other parts or racing gear. It is a beast of a card, but an insane price tag that comes with it. Um, I, am I gonna keep mine? Yeah, mainly because of the pandemic season that we are in now. Vienna is in lockdown, PC parts are scarce, and the 3090 is a flagship that will run many miles on this channel um, until something worth replacing uh, arises. I will ride that card until the wheels fall off, but a pretty good reason um, is, is yeah for me to, to run this channel on basically this card. Uh, so if you know for a personal for a personal card, I would not buy it. Never ever. Like uh, if you have a reason to buy it, you know that that you are gonna get it. But for the rest of you, it's just not worth it. You you can't possibly justify the price tag on that card. All right. So that's my view on it. Um, I'm fairly tired of all these VR testing episodes, to be honest. Let's come back to the main content of this channel. I know many of you wanted to see a tutorial on the inverted pedals, and I have not forgotten about it. Uh, it will be a big episode, it will be a big surprise for you, because I've changed some stuff the way it's supposed to be, because this, uh, what I have right now is not what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you how it's supposed to be done. Um, and. Um, don't know if it's uh, gonna be on the next episode or probably the one after it, but it is coming. All right, so that's my two cents on all of this uh, 3090 topic. And I hope you enjoy it or learned something, at least the settings may help you out. So see you on the next episode. Give this video a like if you liked it or double uh, dislike it um, if you don't like it. But uh, anyway, Subscribe and uh, you'll see me on the next one. <laughs> Take care.